Even in the midst of a full-scale war, voices are heard on the anniversary of the occupation of Crimea that suggest it could have been kept in the orbit of Ukraine. Is this really the case? Every year, after Ukraine's temporary loss of Crimea, there is a discussion about whether Crimea could have been kept under Ukrainian control. Even now, despite the full-scale aggression from Russia, which one would think overshadows the topic of Crimea, there are still opinions among Zelensky's supporters suggesting that Crimea could have been retained, with some propaganda-like labeling of figures such as Turchinov or Poroshenko. Actually, few besides Ukrainian activists and Crimean Tatars can imagine just how insidiously and systematically various strata of Crimean society were bribed, rather than how propaganda worked. But the biggest mistake was the change in the system of staffing the military. Instead of the extraterritorial principle that had existed since independence, it seems that during Yushchenko's presidency, they shifted to the territorial principle of army staffing, and in Crimea, nearly three-quarters of the contract soldiers were locals. The first victim of aggression, in the end, was the topographer, Lieutenant Cochran, a native of Simferopol. But the troops, mainly formed from Crimean residents, remained somewhat non-Ukrainian. Later on, a real personnel catastrophe was revealed when three-quarters of military personnel, both from the Ukrainian Armed Forces and the Security Service of Ukraine, betrayed their military oath. The disintegration of military units had been happening for years, and eventually, it became clear that without political cover from Kiev, this would not have happened. It appears that the latest argument for fueling anti-Ukrainian hysteria was the stoppage somewhere around Zarivka on the Odessa-Kiev highway, of buses with Crimean activists who were traveling to support Yanukovych. The Maidan activists in Cherkasy region turned these buses back to Crimea, but in Crimea itself, Russian media began a frenzy saying that these people disappeared or killed. The population was so heated up that they could easily be taken barehanded and led to block Ukrainian military units. Then we remember how a platoon of paratroopers from Dnipro, who were there for training, was blocked near the village of Paravan in Crimea. The garrisons were blocked because there were partly no even automatic weapons, no fuel, no ammunition. All this betrayal was not done in a moment, but in fact, from the first days of Yanukovych's accession to power. In fact, the soldiers, talked about as a factor that could have decided the fate of Crimea, were not given any chance. Because behind Yanukovych there was a whole Russian team of professionals who, while he was indulging in luxury with a young blonde, worked directly with the Kremlin. The military were not involved in the scenarios of the Maidan, unlike the SBU Alpha unit, because they were afraid that the military would stand shoulder to shoulder with the people. During the Revolution of Dignity, they were brought to complete incompetence. With the election of Alexander Turchinov as chairman of the Verkhovna Rada and acting president, the situation gradually began to improve. However, the government machine was ineffective until the election of Petro Poroshenko as president, as many law enforcement officers understood their status in the absence of an elected president. Therefore, stories that Crimea could have been kept in the Ukrainian orbit are either from immature voters of Zelensky or from Poroshenko's haters who have no understanding of the mechanics of exercising government functions. Mm -hmm.